What are some super Asian habits that you picked up from your parents that you might carry on for the rest of your life? Hey, don't throw away that bag. It's a good bag, okay? Maybe keep the bag, store the bag, maybe even hoard the bag. A whole house of bags, mom? Uh, we got to talk about this viral Reddit thread. These are always fun. Of course, the title was, what super Asian habits have you picked up from your parents? I think a lot of people realize that they subconsciously, in an automated sense, just repeat some of the immigrant behaviors that were taught by their parents. Some people liked them. Some people were trying to get away from them. But regardless, Andrew, they were doing them. Yeah, so we got to talk about this list. We'll talk about which ones that we also carry on. And maybe some that you should probably leave behind I don't know if you live in the modern world, but anyways, guys, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. But David, one super Asian habit that I will carry on for the rest of my life is eating Chinese chili oil. That's why we got Smala, Chinese Italian chili oil. You can order right now. Orders are gonna be shipping out in early November. Thank you to everyone who's ordered. We're very excited. Thank you for your patience, but yeah, check it out if you haven't. I'm telling you guys from Sichuan to Sicily. I mean, here's my quick thoughts. Your parents are your initial programmer. Like if you are a uh, robot or some sort of console, whoever designed you first are your parents, right? Obviously, as you get older, you become an adult, you decide what you wanna keep, you decide what you wanna leave behind, but some things that you haven't put a lot of thought into, they are subconscious, they're going to perpetuate. I know for myself, it was a journey to learn not to hoard stuff. Mm. You know how you think, you know, I don't know, like maybe there'll be some use for this in the future. But the truth is, 95 out of 100 times, you just got to get rid of it. Whether you're selling it, giving yeah. it away, repurposing it, giving it to somebody else who can get more usage rate out of it, you got to clean up your crib, right? If you don't use something for two years, you're probably not going to use it again. That's just my whole, that's my whole thing. Um, other things that I feel like I definitely got from a specific type of immigrant upbringing, uh, everybody's Asian immigrant upbringing is different, is not fully caring about birthdays or holidays that much. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I don't care. I probably care about, what, half of what a normal person cares. Yeah, it's um, not a big celebration for us. Not it. using the dishwasher. Andrew, are, uh, do you we, use the dishwasher? I, we, I, uh, I think we're starting to use it more, but uh, no, I do generally don't. I, I think the idea that you have to prep things before they go into the dishwasher is also a little bit. But I did hear from a water usage standpoint that sometimes using the dishwasher actually saves you water rather than having the water run and you do it by hand. Right, because they heat the water and they recycle it through the system, right? Yeah. Um, did you know that mostly Asians shower at night? That's more of an Asian habit. I guess a lot of Western people wait till the morning to shower. I can't imagine going to sleep dirty. I think you're going to be cleaner, but you're going to have bed head. Um, putting water in the hand soap container when it's about half depleted. Still going to do this because that soap is pretty concentrated, man. Sometimes it's too much soap. And uh, I would say the last thing is, man, and I, this, I promise myself, I'm not going to do it anymore. You probably do it too, Andrew. It's but. falling, not victim, because sometimes it is a good deal, but just to like coupons. Because I don't even want to shout them out because I ended up not being happy with the service. But it's like, man, I found this great coupon for one of those food delivery service items. And then I had right, to cancel right, the subscription, right. but you got to email them. And Not everything that gives you a coupon is worth buying. Anyways, let's get into the list, David. This was the most upvoted item on the list. Somebody said, man, I fear you on plastic bag hoarding, man. The plastic Ziploc bag love is real. In fact, there's so many memes about Asian parents storing or like hoarding Ziploc bags, or I'm sorry, Ziplocs or, or plastic bags that there's even memes saying there's two different types of Asian families. There's the mom that folds them into triangles and the one that just obviously shoves no. the smaller bags crumpled up. I, I can't imagine spending the time to fold the plastic bags. No, dude, and, but I will tell you this, man. There is something about feeling a high quality plastic bag that doesn't make you want to throw it away. You were like, I gotta use this bag. Like, look, the zip, it lines up perfectly. It's like airtight and it's very thick and strong. I have to use right. You're it. You're saying it's like padding the watermelon, the, the plastic jet, uh, bag quality judgment. I mean, you can make a uh, environmental argument for it too, but anyways, Somebody guys. said the near inability to throw out anything until it's completely unusable. I can get 15 years out of a t-shirt or sweatshirts that are two decades Those old. Those t-shirts become very, very soft. I get it. But yes, there, at some point, like if you move out on your own and you're living like a modern life for you to wear a tattered t-shirt from 20 years ago, unless it's nostalgic, it's kind of crazy. And I think that that's why there was that whole viral blog like a couple years ago called uh, Accidental Chinese Hipster mm -hmm. where people were looking like they were in the archive or vintage fashion 
but they were just wearing stuff from 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, what about hoarding Kikoman soy sauce packs or other sauce packs right. from a variety of venues? All right, let's be honest. Everybody out there, leave a comment because I know we've all done this on different levels. Some people hoard a lot. Some people hoard a little. I've kept some, but I realized over time that I don't use them, David, because we have our own sauces. I, ha I buy my own sauce. So why would I want to use kind of that overly sodium, super salty, cheap soy sauce from the packet? Well, you're saying it's never going to be high quality Dude, in the packet. Do you ever bust out the, the McDonald's sweet and sour sauce again? On any other Some dish. Some people might, but I, I recommend people, I don't use the sauces. Uh, if I you're don't. watching this right now, clean out your, your, your sauce packet drawer. Some, something's expired. Somebody said furniture along the walls. Somebody said, oh, wait, I thought only rich people don't do this. Apparently, this is like a big thing on the internet right now. Judging your class by whether or not you put furniture along the walls. Because I guess due to Western design aesthetic philosophies that's considered a faux pas yeah right. especially for rich people they got everything floating in the room so if you if you're wealthy your couch will be in the middle of the room because you're because the couch is the soul of the room like it's like the heart of the room right, right. and it's probably an expensive couch that yeah, looks so like you a have it in the middle croissant or some people say like if your bed is against the wall then you're not as rich as someone who's able to put their bed in the middle of their room Right, but they were saying that even though some my parents have a big suburban house and came up in life, they're still putting furniture on the walls. You can't tell Asian parents to not to put, put the furniture on the walls. I mean, I don't know. It kind of makes sense too. So, um, Somebody said, none of them. I go out of my way to be unlike my parents as much as possible, laughing my ass off. Yo, man, this person definitely had a very uncool childhood, possibly parents that, you know, didn't fully figure out America in the way that he wanted. I don't think there's anything wrong with him reject or them rejecting the lifestyle that they brought up in, but just know why you yeah, are. I think let go of the resentment, but if some sort of like underlying, I guess, rejection of your childhood motivates you to like run your life a certain yeah. way and you like how you run your life with all those details by but, all means. I mean, let's be honest. Not all parents are the same. So some parents had very lovable, warm kind of quirky, fobby parents. Right. And then some parents, had, some kids had a really unbearable, uncomfortable, terrible parent. So it, it happens. But but obviously, you know, on Asian parent stories on Reddit, you're going to see more of the, uh, the latter. Um, somebody said taking extra napkins from everywhere I go. Obviously, it depends on what tier of yeah. napkins it is. I'm going to take more and possibly even having a toilet paper roll dispenser that I put in the cup holder in my car. All right, so... Keeping your napkins in the car, taking extra napkins here, David, since I, I live in the city, I don't have a car, I don't do this as much because I don't have a glove compartment to put my napkins in, but I you will tell you this. Compartment. You got a scooter compartment. I will tell you this. When I feel a really thick napkin at like a certain dine-in restaurant. Equinox. I am like, when you know one of those napkins that feels like a towel or that it's almost reusable, I am tempted to take more. But it's all because I'm like, it got to be used. I was like, I can use this. You got to rank anything like you rank toilet paper. Everybody knows there's low, middle, yeah. high. There's low, middle, high napkins. Yeah. There's low, middle, my, uh, high tier of disposable you, bags. You know those, those one-ply little napkins that you get at like the takeout spot that, that like crumple in water? Like you put one drop of water and just like soaks yeah, everything. Doesn't even absorb anything it on says, your mouth. Don't even like, bother. Don't, don't bother. Somebody says, I eat my salad with chopsticks and I plack, uh, pack my own meals when I get on the airplane. Mm. Um, somebody said, yep, chopsticks are 100% easier to watch and it's just my preferred way to eat salad. Yeah, I think eating salad with chopsticks, not wrong. If you have chopsticks on you to do that, I will say this though, after eating chips and salad with chopsticks before, I do it out of convenience, but I don't do it because I think that the chopsticks is the best utensil for salad. Let's be honest. Actually, the fork is because you can stab the salad and get uh, multiple pieces of salad on a it, fork. It depends what type of vegetable. If you're doing something like lettuce, but if it's butter lettuce or arugula, absolutely, you can eat it with a chopstick. Arugula, yes, because arugula is in the shape of like a it, noodle. It, it's hard to stab the arugula yes, with the fork. Spinach, arugula, things that are thin that can stack within a chopstick grip, yes. But if it's romaine or anything bulky... Uh, no. I, I don't even like mixed greens. Um, somebody said, asking my friends and my significant other, guess how much? Basically, if it's not on sale, I don't buy it, and I get dopamine from getting a really good deal on something. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you do this a lot. You're like, yo, 
guess how much I got this. Guess how much I got this Uber Eats order for. Guess how much I got this thing. Guess how much I got this new Best Buy gadget for. Guess yeah, how sometimes much- when the coupon stack is fire. Yeah. Um, somebody said using food as a substitute for authentic connection and relationships. Have you eaten yet? And a plate of cut fruit is all you need for every emotional situation. Getting food instead of saying, I'm sorry. Listen, guys, I'm not saying that this is not a well-documented Asian parent trope. But don't do it. I don't think- do it, guys. The butt got to stop with us. We got to become more emotionally mature. And, uh, you know, the old ways, the Eastern ways, especially I- the old Eastern ways, those are those ways. We got to be with the new ways. I don't agree that it's a substitute for actually having a talk and apologizing. I think it's an in-between that if you cannot communicate, then you do this. But this is not a full apology at all. And this does not count as emotional, like, you know, emotional connection. But yes, the plate of fruit is an olive branch. It, it, yeah, I think it helps something. Um, somebody's saying, not super Asian, but I eat in a very Filipino way, putting one leg up on the chair next to me and having the two to one rice to food ratio, using a spork and food. A uh, spoon to eat most things. You know, obviously we're talking about the pork and the spoon. And this this is a very Filipino method right here. Um, but yeah. David, Filipinos, they eat the ling- longanisa and they need the pork and spoon. Right. Um, but yeah, some of these are, it's interesting. Some people were saying that these are more like almost region specific. It's not necessarily, some of these are like across Asia and then some of these are more regional. So right, it's very right, right. interesting. Um, of course, going back to using the dishwasher as a drying rack, a lot of people are just talking about saying they don't even have their dishwasher connected to the water hookups. Now, now Dave, I got a question as we get into these. Do you think it's class specific? Like, do you think like Asian families who come over as immigrants but are like, I guess, have more money, do you think they still also do some of these things? Or this is more of like an immigrant level, like middle class, lower middle class like uh, activity? I, I would say more of the latter. Typically... Um, the way I view it is, it varies. It varies because one parent could be from money, one parent could be right. new money, one's right, old right, money. Right, They're right, gonna right. have different behaviors because one's gonna be more aristocratic and colonial. So I mean, it, it could vary a lot. That's a good point. Um, somebody said going to restaurants, looking at a dish, and saying I can make this at home cheaper, or asking my friends if they're cold and need to grab a jacket. Um, yeah, mom always used to do that, right? Uh, to analyze dishes. Yeah. But but at the same time, is that logical? Because obviously everybody knows a restaurant is, a, is often a third place. There's a lot of insurance and labor costs and overhead and rent. and ex- You think, know what I mean? It's almost more like a vibe because you ain't never going to get, for the most part, generally like the value on the food. I think a thought does come into my mind sometimes. Like if I eat something super mid at a restaurant that is simple, it's a simple dish. I do think... Could I have made this at home better? Because sometimes you can do it at home better. That doesn't mean you shouldn't go to restaurants because restaurants are a restaurant for a reason, right? You go out for a reason. But yeah, sometimes I I would say that thought crosses my mind. Taking your shoes off as soon as you get in the home and making all your guests take their shoes off too. Somebody said, I literally went crazy on my friend because she was wearing shoes in my apartment when I had people over. I, I would say this, honestly, if another Asian violates another Asian and everybody else took their shoes off, I'd be like, bro, what were you thinking? But yeah, of course, if it's a non-Asian person, it's different. I, I understand their their culture is fundamentally yeah, different. Yeah, Asian, Asians should be more considerate of that, but non-Asians, I kind of give them a little time, a leeway. I give yeah, leeway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody uh, was t- saying that uh, these are older Asian expressions, such as going, uh, hmm, hmm, or, or like, like, you know, yeah. kind of like, Definitely our kuma. Shout out to kuma. No, I would say dad. I would say dad does this sometimes. I don't. Mom doesn't, but dad does. Dad, like it's a very like. Yeah, yeah. I would say if you're if you if you if they're Asian, fifty five and up, they probably do it. My sewing stuff goes in a cookie tin. This gotta be something that's like nostalgic. But David, what happens when people stop eating these little Danish cookies? Because I I don't buy them you mean anymore. The butter cookies. Yeah. Am I? Are we? Am I? When I grow up and I have a family, am I really gonna be eating this Danish tin? So I, that. But I you know what? Somebody tin. needs to put this on a legacy or tea or something because this is like so such a it, defining it is, experience. It is, it is. Somebody says being a workaholic, mm. being obsessed with having a ultra clean house. No, no, I think being a workaholic, let me modify that one. Being a workaholic and just feeling like that's an obligation to be a workaholic. Mm. Like just being, just being like, it is my work. It is, I just work. And I, yeah. there's no question. There's no question about this. Yeah. But, and I would say maybe even just ex- exchanging time for money. But I think that the second generation or third generation Asian Americans, we need to get to the point where we're getting like more residual 
you know, asset, gr- passive asset growth and things like that. That's like a whole nother level of thinking that we probably got to go learn on our own unless you have a certain type of parent. Somebody says, saving leftovers at a restaurant, shocking how few people outside of Asian households do this. Is this true? I don't know. Do, do other people not get leftovers? I don't know. That one is puzzling. I, I didn't know that so many people thought that other races don't do that right didn't take their food back. I do think that, yes, the like, ratio a, wise, a ratio. lot of Americans are more wasteful, but- they still have like takeout boxes for a reason. But I think Asians, it's very natural for Asians to take home everything. I'll say this. The amount of food that Asians will take back is the like the littlest. Like if it's like three yes. pieces, Asians are like, yeah, I saved that. Yeah, yeah. Can you pack it up for me? Can you pack it up for me? And then and then they're looking at like four pieces of like mapo tofu and it's like no that's what do you true. don't even pack this shit up somebody says not throwing away unused takeout utensils like plastic spoons and forks especially chopsticks right. obviously there's a bunch of fo- uh somebody said yo this post just embarrassed me i gotta go clean out my drawer right now all right the flimsy stuff the question is guys again you can use it you can keep it i think that's fine because it's unused are you going to actually use it or are those disposable utensil is going to sit in your drawer for years is the right. question. It comes with a little salt and pepper packet. The yeah, duo. make sure you use them. Somebody says uh, reaching to the back of the grocery store column when getting an item to get a more, you know, like a fresher item. A lot of people do that, yeah. Um, somebody said covering the remote controls with a silicone cover or clear plastic bag. Got to stop doing this, guys. Don't do it, stop guys. Stop doing it. Don't do it. Man, dude, dudes. If you are a modern man, don't do this one, all right? All right, I'll say this. The silicone cover is OD because it has to be custom fit for that remote, but it does give more grip, though. Sometimes the remotes can be a little slippery. But listen, guys, the remotes nowadays, they don't have that, like, cheap print-on button that, like, wears off anymore. How it's all greasy built in. are your fingertips? Come on. Somebody says uh, tearing paper towels only half or using the corner when I just need to wipe out my this, mouth yep. or a little spill. And somebody said, no, 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 you guys got to get on the choose-your-own-side ones because there's paper towels now that, like, uh, they break one sheet no, in the they're form. perforated so that you can tear off a square. I think it's better. Somebody said house slippers. In fact, I even have toilet slippers. In Japan, the toilet slippers are often plastic. The house slippers are often more some sort of like softer polyester cotton material. Uh, you mm. the Outside slippers are rubber. Uh, I'm not going to have bathroom slippers. There's a lot sure. of slippers, guys. It depends what level of slipper life you guys are about. I'd say out of zero, one, two, three, we definitely have 1.5. 1.5 sounds some good slippers. to me. slippers. But not too many, man. Sometimes it could be too many slippers. Someone's saying, uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm judgmental of people's social status and organizational skills. You know, uh, that, I don't know if that's Asian. Being yeah. very honest. I keep rubber bands from produce and put it on my kitchen cabinet. Yeah. Going to Costco all the time. Okay. Asians a- statistically love Costco. Asians love Costco. More than anybody middle else, Middle class actually. and upper middle class Asian women are like the number one Costco demographic. Walking while holding my hands behind my back. That's crazy. I wouldn't not, adopt. I, I, ain't nothing not wrong with it. Not, it's nostalgic. It's cool, but I don't want to walk nah, like that. Nah, nah, nah. I think it kind of, I think it has to do with kind of like your chi and like being a kind of like an old Could zen open master. up your diaphragm, right? But what I will say this, if you put your hands behind your back, it does like pull your shoulders back so it can maybe help you uh, walk up a little bit straighter, you know, like this, versus like if you have your hands right, forward. Right, right, There could be some up. spinal benefit. Somebody was saying that uh, I have paranoia that tap water is full of pathogens that will kill me, and a lot of people are talking about how their relatives buy these like Japanese water filtration devices underneath the sink. Sniff kissing. Sniff kissing is something that is particularly prevalent in Thailand and Vietnam, I had no idea about this, to be honest, so this is cool. Somebody's saying, uh, when traveling to non-Asian countries, I have to find some Asian food or it's game over for me. I would say that this is a pretty Asian habit. I, I think it's just about when you're traveling, sometimes you see all this new stuff, but you still want to be in your comfort zone, and Asian restaurants or your specific ethnicity's restaurant is always going to be a comfort zone. Yo, we did this TV show in the South. We're in Charleston, Charleston, South Carolina. You cannot find an You might not see an Asian all day long, so at night, we would go to the Taiyo and Sushi restaurant. Yeah. Um, somebody said, drinking hot water, I'm becoming an old Asian woman. It's true when you're at a really American diner and you just ask for flat hot water. People sometimes are like, what? What'd I, you say, honey? I don't really, what'd you request? No, my, nothing my, in it. I, I did do that in front of some white friends back in high school. And back then they questioned it. But I think nowadays, 
more people do it. America is more ethnic. I mean, yeah, there's a lot I of people who I think more people have seen parents. it. It's not as weird. But it was weird 10 years ago to ask her at the restaurant. Somebody was saying, apparently I do a heavy nod or half bow to acknowledge people. So it's almost like from Asia, you know, uh, there's a variety of bows. Andrew, in Thailand, the bow was like this. Everybody knows Japan is very famous for more of a full waist bow. But this guy's saying, I, I found an American one where, you know, it's kind of in the middle where I bow to people. Oh, Pleasure I, I do when I'm in when I walk into Asian spots that are like Fabi and like I see like an older Asian woman approach me whether it's no matter the type of Asian I do I can't help but crumple myself a little and be like hey yeah hi. like a quarter bow a half bow or a, a quasi tiny, bow a tiny little like shrug bow right 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 I mean it makes sense I, I don't know I don't think they're gonna require it but it does feel weird to like stand up tall and be like greeting them you know what I mean like it's just our it's cultural thing from this and that um ultimately how much should people keep people are like picking and choosing you know this list was so long if you do all these uh, things then you're pretty much like an old asian parent but i mean you know how, how do you i pick? think some of them are very sensible and make sense and logical and i think that's fine keep doing them i think there's other ones that are just kind of like you know man that's just not cool anymore and i'm dropping the things that i just don't think are cool having sauce packets that i don't use sitting in my fridge not cool. Uh, I'll keep the, the, the 10 cent target mesh bags, but I'm throwing away the plastic ones. 90, well, the world seven is out of a hundred times. I have Dude. never needed the plastic bags. David, well, the world is moving away from plastic. So good for you. Yeah, that's fair. Um, sometimes I rewash very strong and sturdy plastic disposable mm -hmm. forks though. Cause some of them are pretty strong right. and could be rewashed. I think one way that people could do it is like have a value minded mindset or a frugal mindset, but still do what you want. Like, like I just always give the old AirPods to my sister because even though she could go get the new ones, she doesn't like to get the new ones. Do you know what I'm she saying? She doesn't so, like to spend the money. So yeah. I'm, I, I just give her my old AirPods and I'll get the new AirPods. So it's like somebody in my family is still getting the usage well, rate out of it. It's not like a, sitting there. Uh, losing his asset value. Right, or whatever. it's also like, like giving a gift. At least you turn something that you would either sell for a little bit of money or yeah. throw away and you gift it. But I'm not going to sit there and feel bad and understand. Like my parents would not upgrade the iPhone every year yeah. or the gadgets every year. I would do that because it's just like a weird gratuitous habit that I like to have. But it's like I'm still trying to find a middle point. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that consolidating your back, having a limit to things of what you hoard. I think slight hoarding... It's understandable. Have a limit. Have a limit to the bags. Like if you got 50 bags, you're not using them enough. And you're never going to need 50 bags at once. If you got 10 bags, easy. 15 bags, I get it. 50, no. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. How much do you want to keep? How much do you want to leave behind? What's something that you stand by? For sure, shoes off in the house. That's that's for life, though. That got to be forever. My hey, grandkids got to take their shoes off when they get in the house. You'll want to hoard Smala Sauce if you ever get a chance to try it. So. SmalaSauce.com, guys. Get it right now. Shipping very soon. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. Let us know in the comment section. We out. Peace.